10 interesting dinosaur facts you didn't know were true. Number 10. Most dinosaurs were actually hardcore vegetarians. Another popular idea we have of dinosaurs are these gigantic, scaly, bloodthirsty beasts rampaging around a prehistoric prairie, ripping mammoths apart and making earthquakes with their stomping feet and swishing tails. However, only a small number of them ever ate any meat. According to tooth and jaw fossils, different body structures, and even fossilized dinosaur poo, a whopping majority of them were all out herbivores. All the meat eaters were members of a single group called theropods, which were medium sized or small, as in the size of a chicken. These fiends were wicked fast, and their most famous member was, of course, the Tyrannosaurus, which was about 42 feet long. Number 9 there were never any dinosaurs that could fly. Now, someone might protest and point out the pterodactyl. The only problem is they weren't actually dinosaurs, although they were a kind of flying reptile which were called pterosaurs. None of the dinosaur species could actually fly. Some of them had hollow bones, some of them had feathers, and some even had respiratory systems which are strikingly similar, if not exactly the same as the respiratory systems of birds. However, each of these specific traits were formed separately, and they had no evolutionary connection. That is, until the dinosaur's extinction, when these all came together to form a new creature which evolved into the modern-day bird. We want to take a moment and thank our subscribers and commenters and feature these two comments. The first is on our video about the cursed objects you can buy on eBay, and Amy Simon Biz had this to say. Gah! Why did I decide to watch this at night without the lights on? Gonna go troll eBay. Sorry if this creeped you out too much, Amy. And on our video haunting images from under the sea video, another poem. I'll read it off right now. Roses are red, violets are actually purple. I used to love the ocean, but now I'm not so certain. By Banana Cheerio writing, thanks for continuing the trend of writing poems in the comment section. Back to the video. Number eight, the brontosaurus may never have actually existed after all. The brontosaurus may be one of the most famous dinosaurs out there. The gray one with a crazy long neck like a prehistoric giraffe typically painted as munching on a bunch of leaves. Even its name is celebrity material. It means thunder lizard. Now though, it looks like the thunder lizard was just a misnamed deceptive lizard. The way dinosaurs get named is, a scientist finds a fossil, checks if someone found the same thing, and if they haven't, boom, a new dinosaur. Well, in the late 1800s, a few paleontologists were racing to discover as many fossils as possible, which was called the Great Dinosaur Rush, and one of them was a bit too eager. Othniel Marsh gave the name Brontosaurus to a creature which had already been discovered, and because science tends to stick with the first name given to something, his discovery is getting renamed. So it may be around 150 years too late, but the Brontosaurus turns out to be the Aptosaurus, literally the deceptive lizard. Number seven, dinosaurs were not actually followed by mammals, they coexisted. Contrary to popular belief, mammals didn't just start popping up everywhere when the dinosaurs were unexpectedly eradicated 65 million years ago. Early mammals actually lived right alongside all the various dinosaur species, usually high up in the treetops, safely out of the reach of those gigantic predators. In fact, they evolved around the same time, in the late Triassic period, and they were actually the adapted descendants of the therapocid reptiles. Most of these early mammals were tiny, though, inconspicuous little furballs about the size of mice and shrews, like the Megazostrodon we see in this picture. However, some of them grew up to be approximately 50 pounds, and some, like the Ripanonymous, were even known to have eaten dinosaurs. Six, even the most intelligent dinosaurs were basically idiots. Most of the herbivorous dinosaurs are known to have had such tiny brains, they really couldn't have been much smarter than the plants they ate. In particular, the Stegosaurus is infamous for having a brain the size of a walnut. However, the carnivorous dinosaurs of all sizes and species evolved to have significantly more gray matter compared to their body mass. This was a consequence of their hunter's lifestyle. In order to be able to effectively chase after and catch their prey, they had to evolve superior agility levels, coordination ability, and sight and scent way better than their average vegetarian neighbors. 
However, even the most intelligent ones in this small group of prehistoric smarty pants, such as the Trudon we see in this picture, often hailed as the smartest dinosaur, would barely be able to intellectually compete with the modern day ostriches, which have brains about half the size of a billiard ball. Number five, members of the dinosaur kingdom are not classified according to diet. Okay, so most of us would divide dinosaurs by whether they were herbivores or carnivores, aka vegetarians or meat eaters, but paleontologists tend to see things differently. For whatever weird, nerdy reason, these people decided to classify dinosaurs by the shape of their hip bones. That's right, crotch form prejudice stretches even way back into prehistory. According to this criterion, dinosaurs were split into two groups. The Saurischian, meaning the lizard hip, and the Ornithischian, meaning the bird hip variety. Lizard hip dinosaurs included the carnivorous kinds as well as several sorts of herbivores, and the bird hip group included all the other herbivores we know of. This picture shows an armored Tarixia, a typical Saurischian, and a few specimens of Sauropolis, a typical Ornithischian. Anyone noticing the mixed names yet? And to make it even more confusing, modern day birds actually evolved from the lizard hip group. Four, dinosaurs were not the first reptile rulers of the planet. Believe it or not, there were even more fearsome beasts roaming around planet Earth before dinosaurs came along. The first dinosaurs evolved around 230 million years ago in the region that is modern-day South America. Before them, there were three distinct kinds of royal prehistoric monsters. Archosaurs, meaning ruling lizards, therapocids, mammal-like reptiles, yeah, not confusing at all, such as the Arctocathinus in this picture and Pelicosaurus. Although these latter sound like a mix of dinosaur and pelican, they were mostly similar to gigantic lizards with sails on their back made of stretched skin, which is how they absorbed the sun's heat. Even after dinosaurs evolved, they weren't instantly crowned king tyrants. For 20 million years after they came around, the most fearsome beasts on Earth were prehistoric crocodiles. No wonder their modern-day cousins have such nasty attitudes. The dinosaurs only became the dominant giants 200 million years ago at the beginning of the infamous Jurassic period. Three, chickens are actually adapted miniature dinosaurs. We know that the many diverse specimens of birds' life we see flying around are all descended from dinosaurs, but the most unassuming one of them all turns out to be a predator in disguise. The current theory is that the dinosaurs were wiped out when a meteor struck the Earth, wreaking havoc on its vegetation and messing up their herbivore diets. Suddenly, those bloodthirsty Tyrannosauruses racing around had the upper hand and the best chances of survival, so they started adapting to the new world. Now, it is believed that 66 million years of changes resulted in the Tyrannosaurus sprouting feathers and posing up with humans to become the poultry we know today. And to make it even crazier, although we tend to stuff their bellies with grains of all sorts, modern-day chickens still won't shy away from devouring any leftover meat you might decide to throw into their coop. What's your favorite dinosaur? Let us know in the comment section below. Two, there is an attempt to create a living, modern dinosaur. Anyone who watched Jurassic Park will remember the character of Dr. Alan Grant. A partial inspiration for him was an actual scientist, Jack Homer, one of the best-known paleontologists in the United States and beyond since the movie for which he was a consultant. Although he made many significant discoveries in his field, nowadays he's famous for something a bit more bizarre, trying to create a living, breathing, thankfully tiny dinosaur in the 21st century. He is pouring his efforts into a creature he calls the Chickenosaurus. As you can imagine, this design aims to be a hybrid of the modern day chicken we all know and a small variety of a prehistoric dinosaur. We don't even want to know how, but let's bet the good scientists will crack a whole lot of eggs to make this messed up genetic omelet. Number one, dinosaurs and humans never shared the earth. Thanks to worldwide popular films and TV shows such as the Jurassic Park or the Flintstones, many people still believe that our ancestors went scavenging with the occasional raging T-Rex hot on their heels. Well, sorry to ruin your childhood, but the Flintstones lied. Dinosaurs and humans never came close to each other on the prehistoric timeline. The first people appeared on Earth sometime between 5 and 7 million years ago. That means we're fairly recent news. On the other hand, dinosaurs appeared off of the face of the planet 65 million years ago. Although over the past few years, there have been many efforts to debunk this popular Hollywood myth. A lot of people still have a problem wrapping their heads around it, especially when photos like this pop up. How is that not a plesiosaurus of some sort? 
Look at its four flippers, broad but flat body, and a thin jaw. It's hard to believe that there aren't ancient creatures out there somewhere just hidden by deep waters or jungle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Up next, 18 strange predictions that actually came true. Mark Twain's death. In 1909, Albert Bigelow, who was Mark Twain's biographer, quoted Twain as saying, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It's coming again next year, and I expect to go out with it. It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't. The Almighty said, no doubt.